Hello, my name is Dr. Larry Stoll, and in this short video, I'd like to explain some of the ins and outs of diagnosing bacterial wilt of uh, poa and bent grasses, and also provide some management practices that will help you out just in case you have encountered bacterial wilt in this tough year. This is about midway through the summer of 2010. Typically, turf grass diseases are diagnosed visually either using the naked eye, as in this case we can see the mushrooms of a fairy ring fungus, or with the use of microscopes that allow you to see organisms that are smaller, microorganisms that are more difficult to see. In this case, anthracnose is attacking the leaf tips of Poa annua plants. Or in this case, we are looking at rapid blight Labyrinthia terrestris spindle-shaped cells coming out of a Poa leaf under high magnification. The problem we encounter with bacterial wilt is that the organism is a tenth the size of the organisms that we see with labyrinthia that are barely the, at the size that we can see with a normal compound microscope. So let's take a look at what we actually visualize or what we see when we look at a plant that has bacterial wilt. Well here is a Poa annua green that looks perfectly normal in some areas but has some pretty dramatic symptoms that appear to be consistent with bacterial wilt, small spots of uh, grass that are effective and, and sort of coalesce together. There's other areas of the green, however, that look a little bit different, so we can't tell exactly what the primary problem is with the major portion of the green, but you can see a large area of the green is suffering. Now let's take a sample back to the lab and see what we can find as far as the bacterial wilt symptoms under laboratory conditions. Some of the symptoms we see are some are these water-soaked areas on foliage that uh, look like they've been damaged. Uh, maybe that's aided in getting the bacteria into the plant. So typically the pathologist will take a leaf off the plant and in this case the cut is going perpendicular to the midrib of the plant and we're just going to slice the, the leaf in half and then we're going to see what comes out of that leaf in regards to microorganisms, whether we can see or visualize any bacteria coming out. So here we have the microscope slide set up and we move that over to the compound scope and we can see that under dark field microscopy that light material coming out the top of that cut leaf are bacteria. So there's a lot of bacteria streaming out of this particular leaf but as you can see they're just basically little dark dots, maybe a micron uh, in diameter that are very difficult to distinguish. You can't make out what type of bacteria that is. Is that a normal bacterium that somehow got into the leaf? Or is this a plant pathogenic bacterium that is plugging up the vascular system of the plant? Just seeing bacteria ooze from leaf tissue, especially when the turf has been stressed, doesn't necessarily mean that the causal organism or the cause of the damage that's being observed in the field is due to that bacterium that we're seeing oozing out of the plant. Uh, turf plants are covered with all sorts of bacteria and when they start to become stressed and start to lose the integrity of the plant it's unable to defend itself against all of the normal organisms that occur in nature that normally break down dead plant tissues. We can very seldom with a, with a rapid diagnostic technique such as bacterial streaming from a piece of cut tissue uh, be confident that the diagnosis of uh, bacterial wilt is correct. However, if we use sort of the precautionary principle uh, and we know that the, the bacterial wilt may be involved, uh, we can take some steps in management of that turf to help prevent that turf from that disease from spreading in just in case it was bacterial wilt. And it turns out that those management practices that would help you manage bacterial wilt or slow down the spread of bacterial wilt are probably a good idea when the turf is stressed heavily anyway. If you think you have bacterial wilt acting on your greens, then there's a few things you can do to try to slow down the spread. There's no products that you can spray that are effective uh, entirely on controlling uh, bacterial wilt. Uh, it's an area where there's a big gap in uh, technologies available for bacterial diseases in general. Uh, what you want to do is focus on stress reduction. Try to do everything you can to reduce the stress on the green. That'll be the main way that the plants are going to recover. Uh, 
water it, it, to keep the surface a little moist so that the plants can recover and new roots can develop but don't saturate the soil. It's very critical to not have too much water in the soil profile but you need to have enough for the plant to survive. It's very tricky uh, to work this out effectively. Uh, water during the daytime, syringing in the afternoons and try to prevent watering or irrigation during the nighttime to prevent uh, prolonged periods of leaf moisture. Also when you're mowing, try to mow when there is no moisture on the leaves at all. Uh, if it is a bacterial wilt epidemic that's going on, then it will be able to be moved from plant to plant by the moisture on the mowers with the grinding of the leaf tissue as the tips of the infected plants are cut and moved to the rest of the, uh, rest of the grain. The most important management practice that you can implement when you have stress, heavy stress of any kind, whether it uh, be from disease or from the environment, is to increase your mowing height. Uh, that will speed the recovery, give the plant a little bit of extra leaf tissue to generate some more energy and to cool itself, and it will provide a better uh, response to any type of damage.